Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we started solving this using the mesh analysis technique. We ended up with the three equations. We were able to bring that down to just the two equations. And here we have the two equations in matrix format, looking for I1 and I2, and ultimately looking for the current in mesh one in a counterclockwise direction. So first we need to find the value of the determinant because we're going to use the method of determinants to solve this. So the first, we take the determinant, and that's going to be the product of these two right here. So it would be minus 8 minus J2 multiplied times minus 6 minus J4. And now subtract from that the product of these two. That would be J4 times J4. And that should be a J. There. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve that. So first of all, we have minus 8 times minus 6. That's 48 minus 8 times that, so we have a plus J32 minus times minus comes plus J12. And this times this, we have minus times minus gives me a plus, but J times J gives me minus, and 2 times 4 is 8, so minus 8. And over here, again, we have J times J, that gives me a minus, but times a minus comes a plus, and 16. So combining that, we have 48 minus 8, which is 40, plus 16, which is equal to 56, and 32 plus 12, which is 44, so plus J44. And so that is the value of the determinant. Now we need to find D1. How do we find D1? Well, D1 can be found by taking these values and plugging them in here instead of what we have in the first column. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write 0. 103.3 plus J25 for the first column instead of what we have here. And then we maintain the second column, J4 and minus 6 minus J4. Okay, so now if we solve for this, that gives us D1. All right, so D1, let's write that over here. Uh, D1 is equal to the product of those two. Of course, that would be zero. And let me... Make sure that, I'll just put a little dash line here to make sure that we separate those two, right? So we have zero times that, that gives me zero minus the product of these two. So that gives me a J4 and multiply that times 103.3 plus J25. Okay, so first we multiply this times this, we get 100 times a negative 1 times a negative gives me a plus 100. And multiply this times this, that gives me a minus j. 4 times that, that's 412, 413.2. 413.2, let's check, that's 412 and 13.2. Yes, all right, so that gives me the value for d1. Now, of course, since we're looking for i, we don't have to get the value for i2, but might as well do it while we're here. So now let's find, because we're, after all, we're trying to learn how to do this, just in case. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the determinant and replace this column by these values right here. So we end up with a minus 8, minus J2, and a J4. And on the right side, we end up with a 0 and 103.3 plus J25. This and that will now equal D2. So let's go ahead and work that out. So now we have to multiply this times this. So we end up with minus 8 minus J2 multiplied times 103.3 plus J25 minus the product of those two, which is simply 0. Okay, and that would be D2. Working this out, uh, let's see, lots of multiplications. We probably want to get a calculator. Just make sure we don't do it correctly. So have minus 8 times 103.3. That gives us a minus 826.4. Minus 8 times this, that gives me a minus J200. This times this gives me a minus uh, J times 206.6. And then this times this, that gives me a minus times j squared, which is a negative, that's a plus 50. And minus zero. Okay, and so that's equal to d2. Combining like terms. So d2 is equal to 
This plus 50, that becomes a minus 776.4, because that, yep, that would be right. And this becomes a minus J406.6, and there is the value for D2. Now, we're not going to use D2, but this is how we would find D2. Now, to find I1. To find I1, that is going to be equal to where we have it. So we have D, the determinant, and we have D1. So that's by definition D1 divided by the determinant. So D1 is equal to 100 minus J413.2. And we divide that by D, which is 56 plus J44. Now, of course, what we want to do is convert that to magnitude and angle format. So this is equal to 413.2, we square that, plus 100 squared, which is 10,000. Take the square root of that, we end up at 425.1. So 425.1 with a phase angle of, so that's a minus, so we have 413.2 divided by 100. And take the arctangent of that, that would be minus 76.4. Four zero, so minus seventy six point. Uh, let's keep it three. See if we can figure out the three decimal places. They're not really significant, but keep that divided by the denominator. We have fifty six squared plus forty four squared equals. That so gives us seventy one point two seventy one point two with a phase angle of forty four divided by fifty six. That gives us, take the inverse tangent, 38.157. Might as well put the degree symbols there. All right, now we can go ahead and divide. So we have I1 is equal to 425.1 divided by 71.2. That gives us 5.97 with a phase angle of... Uh, so we have 76.395, that's a minus. Subtract from that, minus 38.157. That gives us a phase angle of minus 114.55. Okay, that's in degrees. Now, of course, remember that I is in the opposite direction, which is the negative of I1, which simply means we're going to take this and add 180 degrees to that. So that would be equal to 5.97 with a phase angle of minus 114. So we're going to plus 180 degrees to account for the negative sign right here. So plus 180, and that gives us an angle of 65.45 degrees. All right, so, and that then would be the value for the current in mesh number one. And that is how it's done. Now, that number doesn't seem familiar to me, but it is, it is right. Okay, got it.